Accepting the second guy for me was clearly based on assumption because the first one was too good and then they were coming from the same country. So because I missed the first one, I said, no, I'm not going to miss this opportunity again. So I dived in for the kill. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Docas Andrew. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, please, before the video ends, endeavor to do so because I want to have you here often. Um, so this in this video, I'm going to be telling you about how my love story with two guys from Better Republic went, how it happened and how it went, and uh, how I got hot because I assumed and generalize so let's get into the story so in 2015 for the first time i headed to Benin republic and i went to study for one year i went to study french for one year so while going because i had had a really bad stuff with heartbreak and all of that i told myself i was not going there for any love related issue i just wanted to go there study and i was studying and working and it was fun but one day in a, in a very unusual way um at a birthday party hmm, Bene people they're known for parties like when I was when I was there I used to really go for good parties and when um at the party I don't know I felt ill I don't even know how it happened but I felt ill and it was this guy one fine boy like that uh one fine and handsome guy like that that took me home so that was where I met him and I don't know I got ill like I said so he took me home and that was how we got hooked up hmm and this guy was not only handsome, he was intelligent because I'm actually drawn to intelligent people. I love intelligent people a lot. So he was intelligent, he had this charisma, like, you know, the, the power kind of man. Hey! So I was like, God! Yeah, and he started to show me Bene Republic to to tourist centers um after my 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 school and my job he would come to pick me and it was so wonderful i'm tempted to call his name but no i'm not going to call his name it was very very wonderful and but i was scared like this guy and he took me to his mom he was already telling me that babe i girl i want to marry you and all of that but i had my fears and my worries and i was like hope this guy is not just setting me up for the kill as usual you know but it was not anything like that it wasn't even a sexual relationship like before you start forming ideas in your head or in your heads or something but the time came for me to go back home because I met him almost towards the ending of my program and it was time to go back home and I left. He didn't want me to go. He pleaded, please don't go, stay so you could, you can find, we can get a job for you and then we start a life together. But I wasn't having any, any of that because even when I was in Benin Republic, I had a house that was on rent in Nigeria that I was paying for and then my family and all. So I went back and when I got back, at that point, I wasn't really technology savvy uh communication stroke technology service that didn't mean that i didn't have a phone but you know sometimes you have a call you will not return it and this guy had a, a lot of energy he was really plain and open so i think sometimes he will call me maybe i will not return the calls he just felt that my energy was not warm enough but it was really serious i can't just explain everything in the video to avoid the video getting so long and boring he was really serious that i had to tell my mom about the whole show but at the end of the day because he felt he didn't get the same energy that he was putting into the relationship and he was he kept telling me come back let's fix things and at that point i just told him you have to come here first and see me. And if you know the Beninois, there's one thing about them. They are scared of crossing the border oftentimes. They feel Nigeria is filled with a lot of stuff. So it was like, okay, even if I'm going to come see you, you come and see me first. But I wasn't having any of that. And before you know what's happening, this guy blocked me. And before he opened up the, like, unblocked me again, he was already married to a white woman. I took it to heart. It hurt me because when he felt I wasn't, while he felt, felt I wasn't giving him enough energy, I was actually considering him strongly. And I was even thinking of going back. I just needed him to give me um, more time. But that was the end of that. So that went and that, that finished up. And uh, about some years after, about two years after, somebody from Benin Republic started to write me again on Facebook. And I was like, oh, Benin Republic again. I didn't even want to give the person attention because I was like, what's this person looking for? Or because I was still missing the first guy. But after everything, we chatted for like two years. 
because it even took about one year before I could give him audience. And after chatting for about two years, this guy was so caring. This guy was in my face. And at the point, I was like, this was how you did. And then you missed the first very good guy who showed you a lot of love, a remarkable kind of love. And I said to myself, okay, I don't want to miss this guy again. So I, at that point, I gave him the chance and I said, okay, let us just, let's start to date. And we started to date and we said, we're going to meet each other. And we met each other. Oh my God. That was the greatest mistake of my life. I mean, I dated, I can say that I dated this guy for like two months because we met each other and we decided to say, okay, let's meet and stay and like um, see how to move this relationship to the next level. Because even before we met, we were already considering marriage and all. And there were two months of stress, two months of emotional abuse, two months of turmoil. How am I going to even explain it? I mean, this guy brought me down in every way that I can picture. He, 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 he abused me verbally. He emotionally abused me. He brought everything I thought that I had, I had achieved. Of course, not monetary and all. He brought them down. It was like, anyone would think you're this, you're that. But after everything, you're just like every other nonsense girl from the village. And it was so hurting that because I am this person, I have zero tolerance for abuse in any form, either physical, verbal, or emotional. And uh, I decided to cut off the relationship. And when I cut off the relationship, I denied him access to me and all. And he wanted to come back at some several points trying to write me and all. And he was like, okay, fine. In my village, ladies don't talk. So because, yeah, I know I'm kind of harsh, but each time I talked to you, you were talking back. And I was like, you were not only harsh, you were emotionally abusive. And I could not take that. But I had to just keep that away, like... um I did not accept him back because I was never going to accept him back. But what am I trying to draw out of this whole thing? The major reason I accepted that second guy was because of the first. I felt, okay, coming from Bene Republic, like the first person, since the first was really good, then this guy too should be like, since he was showing me a lot of care, he was sending me money and all, I was like, who, who knows like why not just give this guy a chance so even the little little i saw a little little red dot because before i accepted to date him but i was like i think Docus, you're too critical um about some things you shouldn't be so like so hard on people like this so i decided to overlook them all right and the guy showed me pepe so this is trying to say that we should not generalize um many people feel that because this person is from Igbo, uh, people say okay the evil people from nigeria they are greedy but the fact also remains that there are so many evil people who are not greedy who are so helpless um, um selfless and not greedy at all many people say um nigerians uh nigerians are fraudulent or in nature or something but the fact remains that there are a lot of nigerians too who do not have anything to do with fraud so the place of individual differences matters here so it doesn't mean that because somebody is from this race some people also are called like some parts of the world they say they are racist but the, the, the fact also remains that there are people from that part of the world that has that have nothing to do with racism we should always give people the chance outside the collective uh, kind of uh, or general uh, uh, generalized form of reasoning oh no because somebody from this place did this to me this person would do this to me so we should relate with everyone either in a relationship or just in a normal day to day life you should try to relate with everyone on a personal level understand the fact that people are different even a set of twins like twins are they when you see a set of twins you see that they are all like they have different personality sets and characteristics so i assumed that because the first guy was really good and I missed him. I didn't want to miss the second one, but I didn't know that I was making a very big mistake. Of course, all those things are in the past already. Like I've even forgotten that that happened, but I just wanted to use it to drive in the message that it's important that you um, you relate with everyone on a personal note. Do not generalize and do not assume. So you don't also like, um, like um, have stories to tell like I do.
but thank God I'm able to use my story to educate one or two persons. So that's it about that. And uh, if you're new to this channel, please don't fail to like, comment, and also subscribe. And this is not a monologue, monologue section, so I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Have you made any mistakes with generalization and um, assumption in the past? How did you feel about it? And uh, what are your thoughts about this video? So guys, see you in the next video. My name is Dr. Sandro, and I love you so much. Mm -hmm.